Hey there guys, how's it going? This is Mike coming back at you with another video on number theory. In the previous video, uh, we talked about linear congruences. We talked about when we can find integer uh, solutions to a linear uh, congruence. Uh, we talked about how many mutually incongruent solutions there are. Uh, and then we went through a method uh, as to how do we solve these uh, types of problems, these linear congruences. So in this video, we're going to go through a few more sample problems uh, just to get ourselves more practice with it uh, and get more comfortable with this uh, with this method that we use. So we're going to solve the given linear congruence, uh, and we're going to find all mutually incongruent solutions at the same time. Uh, so our linear congruence here is uh, 5x is congruent to 2 mod 11. Uh, and just quickly note that um, typically the problems as given to you, uh, these co the, the coefficient on the x and then the uh, b value, uh, those will be less than whatever, whatever your n value is here. Um, if it's not, you could start off the problem by uh, shrinking those guys um, and making those a lot friendlier and a lot nicer to work with. But for the most part, uh, you'll be seeing numbers there that are less than your n value. So thinking back to the previous video, first thing we always do when we're given a linear congruence is to check the GCD of A and N. And we make sure that the GCD of those two things is a factor of B, or we make sure that it um, divides B. Well, the GCD of 5 and 11 is 1. Uh, 1 divides any whole number, so 1 does indeed um, divide 2. So yes, we do have integer uh, solutions, and we know that the number of mutually incongruent solutions we have is the same as our GCD, which is 1. So we have one mutually incongruent um, solution to this linear congruence, which means once we find our x value, that's the only value that we are looking for. We would next divide every one of our numbers, 5, 2, and 11, by the GCD. But the GCD is 1, so it just stays the same. Now, we have to do some thinking, uh, do some mental trial and um, error, uh, or you could do some actual trial and um, uh, uh, error. Try, try to come up with a number so that if I take that number and I multiply it by 5, I'll get some other result. I'll get some product. And we want to try to get that product uh, to be so that when I take it mod 11, I get it to something smaller than what I currently have, so smaller than 5, uh, the ideal case uh, would be um, getting it down to uh, just 1. Uh, so we'd have 1x or just x. So you start thinking of some low multiples, like 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, I chose personally to multiply both sides by 3. Now, if you kept going on a little bit more, uh, say you multiply both sides by 5, you would have 25x. If you take the 25 mod 11, you would get 3. So you'd get something a little bit nicer. Um, but will that necessarily make it easier for the next step on? Who knows? Um, so there are many, many paths you can take uh, to come to the final answer. Uh, and they're all valid. They should all lead you to the same uh, correct answer. But, but like I said, I chose to multiply both sides of this equation here by 3. Multiply the left-hand side by 3, that gives me 15x. 15 mod 11 is 4. So I have 15x is congruent to 4x. Uh, and then the 2 times the 3 is 6. 6 is still less than 11, so I can't simplify that out more. I can't reduce that at all. So now I have to think, okay, what is a nice number 
that I can multiply 4 by and then take that product uh, and take that product mod 11 um, and ideally come up with 1. Well, there's a really nice uh, value that does kind of uh, stand out here. Uh, that value is 3. I'm going to multiply both sides of this right here by 3. And that's going to give me 12x, which take the 12 mod 11, you get 1. So we get 12x is congruent to x. Uh, 6 times 3 is 18. Uh, and then take 18 mod 11 and you get 7. So we have our one and only solution. X is, uh, you could say, equal to 7. You could say X is uh, congruent to 7 as well. Uh, I believe technically saying X is congruent to 7 uh, would actually um, incorporate all uh, numbers that are congruent to 7 uh, mod 11. Uh, so let's go with the congruence here. But just to recap that process, find the GCD of A and N. Make sure that that GCD uh, does indeed divide your B value. Once you've done that, divide each of A, B, and N by that GCD. You'll get a simplified uh, linear congruence. You're then going to solve that simplified linear congruence. In this case, the simplified was the one we were given. And when you solve it, you're just trying to play with multiplication uh, of the right number uh, so that you can shrink that coefficient on your x down to 1 when you take it mod your n value. Once you found one of your uh, incongruent solutions, uh, you then take n divided by your GCD, and you're going to add that on to your previously found solution to come up with your new mutually incongruent solution. We'll see this uh, whole process uh, really being used in the next practice problem here. So we're given this linear congruence that we have to solve, and we're going to find all mutually incongruent solutions. 6x is congruent to 15 mod 21. First thing we do, we need the GCD of 6 and 21. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard to figure out that the GCD of 6 and 21 is 3. And now the question is, uh, does 3 divide 15? Yes, it most certainly does. So we have integer solutions and we're going to have three mutually incongruent solutions that we're going to come up with. So that's very important uh, to keep in mind. Next step, divide your A value, your B value, and your N value all by that GCD of 3. And we get a simplified congruence. Uh, 2x is congruent to 5 mod 7. Now we have to solve uh, the simplified congruence. Um, I want to come up with preferably, ideally, a nice low number uh, that I can multiply 2 by, such that when I take this resulting product, 2 times whatever this nice low number is, when I take that product and take it mod 7, uh, ideally I come up with 1. Um, and luckily, there is a nice number that will take care of that for us. Um, that number is 4. I multiply both sides by 4. 8x, well, the 8 mod 7 is 1, so 8x is just congruent to x. 5 times 4, obviously, is 20. And take 20 mod 7, you get 6. So x is congruent to 6 mod 7 is one of our three mutually incongruent solutions that we know that we have. This is our first solution. How do we take, or how do we find the other two? Well, to get my next one, I'm going to take that seven there. I'm going to add it onto the six. That gives me my second mutually incongruent solution of 13. To find my third and final one, add 7 onto the 13 that we just came up with, uh, that gives me 20. Uh, and that is um, enough. 
uh, and that is another uh, mutually incongruent uh, solution to the given problem that we had. Uh, for a second there, I thought it was going to be mutually congruent, uh, but it's mutually incongruent to the question that we were given to solve at the very beginning. And as we see here at the bottom, this is what we just said. The si uh, 6 is one of our three uh, solutions. The other ones are 13 and 20. Um, and, you can ch and you can plug each of these numbers in to the original linear congruence uh, and check that it does indeed hold. So in this problem, you see the full process really being used uh, more clearly. Uh, you see every step of this process uh, going on here. So next up, I have a couple problems uh, for you uh, to try on your own. Um, I want you to see if you can solve these linear congruences. So first one, solve the given linear congruence, find all mutually incongruent solutions. 28x is congruent to 8 mod 32. Uh, so pause the video here, try to find all mutually incongruent solutions uh, to this given linear congruence. Think about the process that we talked about in the previous video, as well as uh, just now in this one here, uh, and see if you can come up with all four correct answers. So press pause. Once you think you have the correct answers, press play, and we'll see if you are right. All right, let's see if you uh, were right. First, we need the GCD of 28 and 32, which is 4. And 4 obviously does divide 8. So we have integer solutions, and we know that we have four mutually incongruent solutions that we need to find here. I'm going to divide each of my numbers by the uh, GCD to get my simplified congruence. So we're solving 7x is congruent to 2 mod 8. Now I'm thinking, okay, take 7, multiply it by some number, I get some product. Take that product mod 8. Uh, ideally, I want to get it down to 1, but let's at least try to get it down to something less than 7. Um, I thought about it. I said, okay, if I take the 7 and multiply it by 5, that gets me 35. Uh, 35 mod 8 is 3. So I have 35x is congruent to 3x. I multiply the 2 by the 5 to give me 10, uh, but 10 mod 8 is 2. So I'm down to 3x is congruent to 2 mod 8. Um, I still need to get it down to just x. Um, so I need to multiply 3 by another nice number uh, such that when I take that product mod 8, I get ideally 1. Uh, luckily, this is a nice low number. I just have to multiply by 3. Uh, so 3 times 3x or 9x. The 9 mod 8 is 1. And 2 times 3 is 6. So again, we find that x is congruent to 6 mod 8. Well, again, this is only one of our four mutually incongruent um, solutions to the given linear congruence up here. What I need to do to find the other three is take this 8 that's here, add that on to my previously known solution to get my next mutually incongruent solution. So 6 plus 8 is 14. There's my second one. Add another 8 that gives me 22 is my third mutually incongruent solution. And then my fourth one, add the 8 onto 22 to give me 30. So 6, 14, 22, and 30 are my four mutually incongruent solutions uh, to this given problem. So if you used the uh, process, uh, it should have been pretty straightforward. All right, just one more problem left here. Try to solve this guy on your own. Again, find all mutually incongruent solutions. 11x is congruent to 7 mod 13. So press pause on the video now. 
Once you think you have all the answers, uh, press play to see if you are correct. All right, let's see if you are correct. Uh, the GCD of 11 and 13 is 1. 1 obviously does divide 7. So we know that we have just the one mutually incongruent solution. Uh, so this is a pretty nice case here. Um, divide every number by 1 still gives you the same thing. Now we're working with some larger numbers here. Uh, now they're not as nice. Uh, so this does require a little bit more thinking, perhaps. Um, but if I take 11 and multiply it by 5, that gets me 55. And then take 55 mod 13, and you're left with 3. Uh, so 55x is congruent to 3x. 7 times 5 is 35, but 35 mod 13 is 9. Uh, so now we're down to 3x is congruent to 9 mod 13. Um, and now um, maybe you thought of this number uh, fairly quickly. Maybe you did another step in here. Um, but I can multiply 3 by 9 to give me 27, and 27 mod 13 is 1. Uh, so hence why we have 27x is congruent to x. 9 times 9 is obviously 81, but 81 mod 13 is 3. Uh, so we have our one and only solution, uh, x is congruent to 3 mod 13. So hopefully you got that one right. Uh, all these problems are the, are the types of problems that you'll see from me on a homework or quiz or test. They're all going to follow this same set of steps that you have to follow uh, to solve these linear congruences. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them in the comment section below. Otherwise, until the next video, take it easy, guys.